A judicial panel set up by the Lagos government to probe cases of police brutality in the state has begun playing back the closed-circuit TV footage from the October 20 Lekki shooting. The panel had obtained the footage of the incident from the Lekki concession company at its last sitting. The chairperson of the panel, retired Justice Doris Okwobi, granted approval for the 22-hour footage to be played after hearing from the consul to the LCC and the Lagos state government. The video was played for about four hours, after which the consul to the NSAR's protesters, Ms. Adishino Ogulano, requested for it for further viewing. This was opposed by the consul to the government, but was overruled by the panel chairman, who then gave Ms. Ogulana 48 hours to view the footage. Ms. Ogulana had earlier made an appearance for the NSAR's protesters, but was objected to by the opposing consul on the grounds that the NSAR's protesters were not recognized by law. After much argument, he presented three ladies as representatives of the NSARS protesters. The panel chairperson then ruled that Mr. Gulana could represent the protesters. My learned friend, Ogulana, is entitled to represent anybody that is known to law or who may represent interests comprising NSARS protests, not the other way around. Because we are dealing with the Syria fact actually was on trial before this time. You must know who anybody is representing. And he was going on to describe my client as Lee Dallas. He's not in a position to describe my clients. They are not your clients. And by the way, my observation is that it's because of NSAS protesters that all of us are here. The South abuse is because of NSAS protests. The lady told the city shoot NSAS protesters. It's just like the university. Everything is about the students. Whether you call them vice chancellor, academic staff, union workers, Nasu, whatever. It is because of the students. And the first thing, including them, is because of NSAS protesters. My clients are not among us. And if I can remember very well, that my lord, my lord did advise or counsel four days ago. That is not a regular court. Rules of evidence and all that are all the strict legality that, that um, lawyers are revealing. It's a fact-finding panel. But to accommodate them, I, 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 I know they didn't have the temerity to begin to ask of my instruction to satisfy them. May I call Victoria O'Neill? Victoria O'Neill. Victoria, please come up. Thank you. Dabira Ayuku. Dabira. God bless you. Yeah. That's a picture of me. I'm a cancer. Yes. They are the offices. They are not representing stories of those. We are here. And I know the panel is not that Come closer to your lawyer. Don't move to the people. These are part of people who are running underground, threatening by forces of the state. And they know it. You have been caught there. I'm so sorry, my lord. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, my lord. This is a serious matter we have here. We have Victoria Oniru. We have Gabira. Those who do wonders, yeah? That they are. And you go. A-Y-U-K-E-U. And as well as perpetual activity. And you go. Can't say, can't say, you go. You go. We are in office. This are part of the administration. They are leaders. <coughs> they are no evidence. No evidence. And not something canary. And they are not ghosts. And they are not, not ghosts either. This is my response. Can we turn can, can we can we turn them back up now? They uh, turn me back. It, whether it is NSAS protesters or all on behalf of NSAS protesters, these are human beings. These are incorporeal material. 
Fais une plante. Là, j'y ai. Entrez tout ça. To save the time of the panel, I'm, I'm now guided. I'm seeing human beings. These are different people. As a guest, that's all we want to achieve. We have achieved now. We now know the faces behind the name. But they without all the protection. I withdraw my objection now, having identified the specific individuals. Meanwhile, over in the nation's capital, more witnesses have come forward to testify on the police brutality meted out to them by men of the defunct Special Anti-Robbery Squad at the third sitting of the Independent Investigation Panel on Human Rights Violation in Abuja. Two cases came up for hearing today as the victims, through their counsel, narrated how they were detained and tortured by officers of the disbanded unit without access to justice. It is the third day of the sitting of the Independent Investigation Panel on Human Rights Violations by the defunct SARS, and two cases are slated for hearing. First is from Mr. Tony Ducci and seven others. According to their counsel, Barrister Samuel Yusuf, the men of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad arrested, tortured, and unlawfully detained them in Abuja despite mistaking their identity. They're asking for the sum of 50 million naira as compensation. People were sleeping in their houses when SARS now came. After the first, after Abu had a clash with some of the villagers, they came and broke into their homes and arrested them and took them to Kefi. Uh, under severe torture, they detained them, they kept them in Kefi for two weeks. Components were not there. So he was attacked, uh, the, the villagers attacked him. He went back to SARS office and now mobilized SARS and went back to, uh, to Durin. Anybody he found, he arrested them. That is how they came in, in the eight of them. When we asked him to testify in court, in fact, he told the court, at the Chief Magistrate Court, Karu, that they were not at the scene of the crime, that the people who beat him and attacked him are at large. So he was, the, the, the complainants were being held on holding charge which is contrary to the provision of the administration of justice, I would no longer keep people. We were held on holding charge until they found out the actual people that beat Abu. The second case is from Mr. Gabriel Oforma, whose land documents were seized and haven't been returned till date. They accosted him that he's under arrest. He said, what did I do? That his only saving grace is to hand over those documents to him. He can go home free or they will detain him. So he handed over the document and took photographs of them taking the document from him. If I'm claiming that my land is my land, the right thing for me to do is to go to court. I need not seek the services of the police and be victimizing people and be harassing them that I have a land somewhere. So that's just the case of that. And the section 44 of the 1999 constitution makes it clear it's a violation of human rights of any Nigerian to forcefully take possession of their property, whether movable or immovable without the other court. The panel will resume on Monday, November the 16th, 2020, to take more cases. The panel will also announce a date for the inspection of the police detention facilities. So what we are going to do, we are, we are, we are citizens, are we not? Yeah, yeah. Of course we are. are. going to be part of the panel. Yeah. Definitely. Now back in Lagos, while the judicial panel sitting was on, a group of students under the auspices of National Association of Nigeria Students were outside protesting the killing of their fellow student, Onifade Pelumi. 20-year-old Onifade was a 200-level student of the Department of History at Tai Sholari University of Education, Ogun State. He worked as an intern with an online television and was allegedly killed on October 24 by the Lagos State Task Force while covering an attempted burglary at a government facility in Okoroba area of Agege. Why we are here today is just to register our displeasure. Oh, yes. This is just a tip of an iceberg. Yes. But I will appeal to comrades student union leaders, so please calm down a little bit. 
this one of our lawyers representing us on Kwelumi's case is here. Definitely, we are not going to go back until we get justice. Away from the judicial panel, Bono State Governor Babagana Zulum is warning against further protests by some youths whom he said took laws into their hands recently to destroy properties in parts of the country. The governor, who was at the State House to meet with President Muhammad Buhari, also condemned the shooting at Lekki. He said he briefed the president on the gradual return of peace to his state and the return of over 100,000 internally displaced persons to their ancestral homes. I'm calling all Nigerians, especially the youth, to be very careful. The whole Boko Haram saga started as a result of a protest by some youths in my degree against the use of helmet by motorcycle riders. You have seen the situation now. The youths are with us. We are taking very good care of them. Palliatives were distributed, distributed to them as at when due. We are giving them some certain financial support. And I think the best way every Nigerian to seek for his right is for us to seek for our right through the legitimate means. Let me also use this opportunity to condemn police brutality in other parts of the nation. Let me also use this opportunity to condemn the killings in Lekki. But I will also use this opportunity to also condemn the excesses of some of Nigerian youths in taking the law into their hands by destroying some of our basic infrastructures that are meant to support the less privileged and vulnerable. In the meantime, the State House received another visitor, the Lagos State Governor. He paid a visit to the President to brief him on the level of destruction suffered by the state in the aftermath of the NSARS protests. Governor Somolu, who presented a pictorial report on the damage to properties and facilities carried out by rampaging youths to President Buhari, left the State House without talking to journalists. The Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, was also present at the meeting. The Nigeria Governors Forum says it will engage traditional religious and civil society organizations to drive a common agenda and generate the necessary support for the country's security personnel. This formed part of resolutions of the group at their meeting on Thursday to review the recent NSARS protests and the coronavirus pandemic. The governors also resolved to adapt both state and regional levels guidelines to reduce restiveness among young people as the agitations are attributable to social and economic inequality in the country. They also commended CACOVID for presenting the true situation of what transpired in light of the unfortunate misperception that attended the distribution of palliatives at the state level. In part two after the break, court nullifies candidacy of Frank Ibezim as winner of APC primary for Imo North Senatorial District by election, orders INEC to substitute his name with that of Ifai Ararume. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channel Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Lagos Judicial Panel probing cases of police brutality plays back CCTV footage from the October 20 Lekki NSARS protests as witnesses narrate tales of illegal detention and seizure by the disbanded Special anti robbery Squad in Abuja. Chief Justice of Nigeria swears in eight new justices of the Supreme Court asks them to uphold their integrity and respect for the Constitution. Delta State Government says cause of the unexplained deaths that claimed 22 lives in the last one month is yellow fever. And Democratic candidate Joe Biden overtakes President Donald Trump in key states in the U.S. presidential race as Georgia announces vote recount in state.
Imo State Governor Hope Zadimma has relaxed the 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. curfew, which was earlier imposed in all parts of the state due to the chaos and destruction of lives and properties during the peaceful NSARS protest that was hijacked by rampaging youth. The governor disclosed this at the government house in Oray, the state capital. He says the curfew will now be effective from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. until further notice. The NSARS protest that was hijacked by hoodlums for which they visited the mayhem to the, on the state. And um, having reviewed the situation and having consulted the security agencies, we are also once more going to res, uh, relax the coffee to start from 10 p.m. to 6 p.m. 6 a.m. So henceforth, the coffee will be effective 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Now, a federal high court in Abuja has granted the request of the Central Bank of Nigeria to freeze the accounts of 19 individuals and a public affairs company linked to the NSARS protests. Justice Ahmed Mohammed granted the request of the CBN filed on the 20th of October 2020. The court order directed the affected banks to freeze all transactions on the 20 accounts for a period of 180 days pending the outcome of investigation and inquiry uh, currently being conducted by the Apex Bank. The company had earlier sued Access Bank PLC for allegedly blocking an account used to promote media coverage of the NSARS protests. Some more stories now. A federal high court sitting in Owere, the Imo State Capital, has nullified the candidacy of Mr. Frank Ibezim as the winner of the APC primary for Imo North Senatorial District by election held on September the 3rd, 2020. Delivering judgment, the presiding judge, Justice Garba Ringim, ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to immediately substitute Frank Ibezim's name with that of Senator Ifani Ararume, who he says is the authentic and right rightful winner of the primary election. The judge said Mr. Ibezim's candidacy was nullified on grounds that he did not participate in the September 3rd primary election of the APC because there was a petition by the APC screening committee that he and five others were disqualified. Uh, this is for not meeting basic requirements. Therefore, any vote allotted to him is a nullity in the eyes of the law. Still some court stories. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has granted Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SARAP, a request to apply for judicial review and seek an order of mandamus directing the leadership of the National Assembly to publish completed public hearings and corruption probes by the National Assembly since 1999. Sir sued the President of Senate, Ahmed Lawan, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Femi Bajabia Miller, over failure to publish details of corruption probes. The suit followed recent public hearings by the National Assembly on corruption allegations in ministries, departments, and agencies, including the NDDC, the NSITF. Uh, Serap is seeking an order to direct and compel Dr. Lawan and Mr. Bajabia Miller to send all reports of completed public hearings and corruption probes to appropriate anti-corruption agencies to consider if there is sufficient admissible evidence to pursue prosecution. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Mohammed, is advocating the need for justices of the Supreme Court to uphold their integrity and respect for the Constitution in accordance with their judicial oath of office. Speaking during the swearing-in ceremony of eight new justices of the Supreme Court, Justice Mohammed warns them not to allow their personal ambition be cloud their sense of judgment. The courtroom is filled to capacity as lawyers, friends and associates of the newly appointed Supreme Court's justices thronged the court to witness the swearing-in ceremony. 
One after the other, the new justices take turns to take the oath of office and oath of allegiance to the Nigerian constitution. At this level of adjudication, you should begin to see yourselves as the representatives of the Almighty God on earth. You must not, therefore, allow your personal ambition or any extraneous considerations to be cloud your sense of judgment. Your interactions with people of un, uh, unenviable inclinations and a pedigree, if any, must be halted forthwith. Inaugurated justices are Justice Lawa Garibar, Justice Helen Ogumomiju, Justice Abdu Aboki, Justice Ibrahim Saolawa, and Justice Adamu Jaoro, Justice Samuel Oseji, Justice Tijani Abubakar, and Justice Emmanuel Agim. These additions are expected to expedite justice delivery at the nation's apex court. And justice delayed, we say justice denied. So we are now getting to a point where certainly there will be clear, expeditious administration of justice and cases will be heard expeditiously and obviously the litigants will be happier for it because there will be no undue delay resulting from the fact that we have limited hands in the judiciary, especially at the APS court. For me, uh, with this kind of number that we now have, I don't think that we should have issues with dispersing with justice in, at Supreme Court level. So uh, it's commendable and uh, I wish them well. The latest elevation increases the number of justices on the apex court bench from 12 to 20. To other stories, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has presented a report on the 2019 general election, a 13-chapter document with 180 recommendations that the commission says will help it conduct free, fair, and credible elections in the future. Speaking at the official presentation of the report in Abuja, the chairman says some of the recommendations, especially those concerning election administration that are within the powers of the commission, are already being implemented. It's been over a year since the conduct of the 2019 general election and the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, along with national commissioners and development partners, are ready to present the Commission's report on the exercise. The 13-chapter document contains major information about the process and recommendations on how to strengthen Nigeria's electoral system. It is my fervent hope that making the two reports public will provide a better understanding of the issues and challenges associated with the conduct of the 2019 general election and serve as important resource materials for research and the promotion of broader national discourse on the necessary reforms required for the continued delivery of peaceful, free, fair, credible, inclusive, and safe elections in Nigeria. To the, Nigerian public. the report is officially presented along with another publication, which is a compilation of the post-2019 stakeholders' engagement with INEC. <laughs> Chairman of the Commission says implementation of some of these recommendations led to improvement in more recent elections. Some of the recommendations that require administrative action by INEC are already being implemented resulting in improved management of the electoral process as seen in the recent off-cycle governorship elections in Edo and Ondo states. We are similarly engaging with the National Assembly on aspects of the recommendations that require legislative action. Apart from serving as a resource for the Commission, this report contains valuable lessons for future polls. The lessons that uh, clearly come out from all this is that technology in elections, uh, you know, has become inevitable. However, 
technology is not the be all and end all. Uh, technology without trust will only complicate matters more. Trust is at the very heart of all elections. And that is why the Commission has laid a lot of emphasis on openness and transparency, uh, on building trust. Nigeria runs a four-year election cycle. INEX says this report is being released into the public domain to help both the Commission and other key players in the country's electoral system deliver a more efficient polling process. When the News at 10 returns, World Trade Organization postpones indefinitely meeting to confirm the new Director General of the 164-member institution. That's on Business News. You join us again. The Delta State Government says the cause of the mysterious deaths that have claimed about 22 lives in the last one month is yellow fever. According to the State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Modi Onoye, he told journalists in Asaba today that tests carried out on the victims have come back positive for yellow fever. According to him, apart from the 22 deaths, there are seven active cases in hospitals across the state. The commissioner also says the state is awaiting the authentic authentication of its position from the regional test centre in Dakar, Senegal, in the next one month. Samples were collected from uh, from patients and sent to uh, laboratories. We have received results uh, from, um, for some of these samples that were sent, and um, the results point to yellow fever as being because of the deaths we are, uh, we've had of in those areas. Of course, uh, the results that we have so received um, is helping us to move into more definitive action as we still await you know, uh, a final authentication of this result from the regional reference laboratory. Uh, we are taking definite lines of action on what we need to do to have an effective um, outbreak uh, response. Still on health matters, the Lagos State Government says it has confirmed positive COVID-19 cases in a secondary boarding school on the mainland. According to school authorities, a member of the school staff was confirmed positive for COVID-19 on November the 2nd, 2020, with contact tracing showing that a student and four contacts of the staff members are positive for the virus. The Lagos State COVID-19 Incident Command System through the Emergency Operations Center explains that it is investigating the incident, assuring members of the public and stakeholders of the school that the situation is completely under control. It adds that steps are being taken to contain the spread within the school and reduce exposure to the outside community, insisting that all parents are being contacted first through the PTA and a family Zoom call is being arranged to further allay their fears. The governor of River State has charged the church across the country to speak up against societal ills and injustice so leaders can take a cue to correct anomalies associated with government's policies and programs. Governor Wike, who made the statement when the new primate of all Nigeria Anglican Communion, Most Reverend Hon Henry Ndukuba, paid him a curtsy visit in Government House Port Harcourt. Most Reverend Ndukuba, who was accompanied by other bishops of the church, commended the governor's leadership, his courage and firmness. It's a room full of the clergy, led by the newly enthroned 5th Archbishop, Metropolitan and Primate of All Nigeria, Anglican Communion, Most Reverend Henry Ndukuba, who is on a courtesy visit to Governor Yesom Wike. Most Reverend Ndukuba says the Governor's audacious disposition in leadership should be commended, while stating that the new church will be focused on impacting the people, especially through education as bequeathed by their forebearers. It is good to see one like you standing out boldly, leading with firmness and leading with courage. 
we intend uh, building a, a university of uh, technology at Kweta in Abuja. For the governor who donates 500 million naira to the Anglican Church Education Development Fund, the church must not shy away from speaking truth to power. He adds that River State cannot be used to launch attack against the nation's sovereignty by criminal elements who must be isolated from credible advocates. This is the time for the church not to be those out. This is the time for the church to speak out. When society is bad, it affects the church. When governance is bad, it affects the church. No matter how you look at it, you can, nobody can run away. Things are not working out well in the country. If we had not imposed that coffee that day, ask anybody, the world has turned out to be Hausa and the, and the Igbos. And do you know the present attack that would have happened in other states when they hear, oh, our people have been killed like this. Oh, so they would have been killed. Do you know what would have happened? We cannot use our state to launch an attack. You and all yours. The visit by the clergy could perhaps set the tone for a collaborative effort between the government and the people of faith to deploy necessary machinery to promote national unity and development. The Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, says investigation is ongoing to ascertain the cause of the fire that gutted the tank farm depot along Gaskia Road in Ijora Badia area of Lagos. In a statement, the DPR describes the incident as unfortunate, adding that it is monitoring the situation. The agency adds that preliminary report available has it that the facility caved in and that emergency response to control the fire was swiftly activated by the company, as well as other concerned groups, and the fire brought under control. Thanks a lot, Millicent. Welcome to Business News. The World Trade Organization has postponed a general council meeting earlier set for Monday, November the 9th, where members were expected to select a new director general. In a statement issued today, WTO General Council Chairman David Walker says the meeting is postponed until further notice due to current events surrounding the U.S. presidential election, while he will continue to undertake consultations with WTO members about selecting the next leader. The announcement comes a week after the U.S. unilaterally opposed the WTO panel's recommendation of Nigeria's candidate Dr. Ngozi Okunjo Iwela as the preferred choice over South Korea's candidate and trade minister Yoo Myung Hee for the top job. The decision will delay the WTO's ability to confirm Dr. Okunjo Iwela as the first African and female to lead the 164-member intergovernmental organization in its 25-year history. The Minister of Transportation, Mr. Rotimi Amechi, says the federal government requires the sum of $656 million to complete work on the Lagos Ibadan Railway project. Mr. Amechi, who was speaking while defending his ministry's 2021 budget at the Senate, explains that the amount is needed to put necessary infrastructure in place for the project to serve its intended purpose. Mr. Amechi also reveals that the ministry would commence the reconstruction and rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt Magdurri Eastern Narrow Gauge Railway in 2021. Under our railway modernization program, the Ministry is happy to report that the construction of Lagos Ibadan Standard Gauge Line has reached 92%. In fact, we should have completed by now two factors uh, have delayed us. The COVID factor delayed us, if not, we have completed by June, and then NSAS chased away our uh, workers. Uh, however, I want to report that they are back to site. Uh, however, for the project to achieve full okay, the, you, like you know, the funds are borrowed from China Exim Bank and will attain practical completion for it to be used for the intended purpose. Some aspects of works involving construction of upgraded railway stations, signal and telecommunication system, power supply scheme, and construction of pedestrian over and overpass bridges have to be completed. These additional and extra works amounting to $656 million, which is to be financed 
by the federal government of Nigeria has been approved by the Federal Executive Council for Implementation. Therefore, in order not to forestall the progress of implementation, we will be needing adequate funds to be provided in the 2021 budget proposal to facilitate the completion of the project. Economic advisory company Financial Derivatives says it expects Nigeria's headline inflation to rise further to 14.5% in October, up from 13.71% recorded in September. In its monthly price survey, FDC highlights that the projection would mark the 14th consecutive month rise in the country's inflation rate and the highest level in 33 months. The company further explains that the NSAS protests heightened existing output challenges and supply chain disruptions within the month, while the central bank's forex rationing and restriction for imported finished goods have raised inflationary pressures with food inflation estimated to climb to 17.05%. The National Insurance Commission is expected to issue fresh directives to insurance companies to cover risks arising from strikes, riot and civil unrest. The Commissioner for Insurance, Mr. Sunday Thomas, who made this known at a forum hosted by the Chattered Insurance Institute of Nigeria says the recent outbreak of protests and civil unrest across the country and the resultant losses had exposed the vulnerability of government, businesses and individuals to unforeseen events. Mr. Thomas says the new directives would ensure the underwriting is strengthened through appropriate rates and charge requisite premiums to enable insurers to fulfill their mandate in promptly settling corresponding claims without financial strain on households and businesses in the country. Well, let's check in on the stock market now. The NSC's main index crossed the 31,000 level at the close of today's trading session after a renewed bargain hunting for equities lifted the indicator by nearly 1%. Chimeze Obiwagu has a summary of Friday's activity at the stock market. Thanks and welcome to the stock market report. The bear has gone back to hibernation after rearing its head yesterday. The sentiment for the week was mixed as there were some profit taken. Despite that, the week closed 1.51% positive. But let's look at today's numbers. The market was in the red zone for the better part of the trading session. But as soon as Dangode Cement's earnings hit the market, that was about an hour to the end of trading. The game changed. Interest shifted, more by sentiment towards the cement giant. The group's nine months earnings, very impressive. Quite a leap in its gross earnings. Earnings per share and profit after tax up by 35%. And at the sound of the closing gong, the bull reinstated itself as the king of the market. Index up almost 1%. When you talk to a trader, he will tell you that we are likely going to see this bull market till the end of the year. Why? because the yield environment in the fixed income market is still low, coupled with the fact that the earnings are still coming in. And don't forget, investors are positioning themselves ahead of the end of year dividend payout. And by the way, talking about earnings, we're still expecting more results from the banking sector. So far, only Stambik IBTC and Fidelity Bank have posted their results so we're seeing more buy sentiment in that sector as reflected on the sectoral chart. GT Bank is responding positively to the report that the bank will be restructuring to become a holding company, joining the likes of FBN Holdings and Stambik IBTC. Activity was quite heavy, a lot of bargain hunting. Look at this, over 607 million shares traded and about 5 billion naira realized. Investors are also monitoring developments in the U.S. election, but analysts say the outcome may not necessarily have any direct impact on our equities market. But of course, we all have our eyes on it. For now, thank God it's Friday. And that was the Stock Market Report. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago. And that's business news tonight. It's back to Millicent for the rest of the news at 10. Thank you, Taniola. Still ahead on the news at 10. Democratic candidate Joe Biden overtakes President Donald Trump in key states in the U.S. presidential race. To stay with us.
Democratic candidate Joe Biden has pulled ahead of President Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, a key state in the U.S. presidential race. Mr. Biden is leading by more than 13,000 votes, with 98 percent counted. If he takes the state, he will win the election. Earlier, Mr. Biden edged ahead of his Republican rival in Georgia, another key battleground state, where recounts will now be held after unsupported claims of election fraud from the president. Here's Simon Pusey with more on this and other international news and around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The vote counting in the race for the White House has continued for a third day and with Joe Biden closer than ever, incumbent Donald Trump has made a new series of unsubstantiated claims about what he calls illegal votes and attempts to steal the election from him and from the Republicans. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. If you count election interference from big media, big money, and big tech, as everybody saw, we won by historic numbers. And the pollsters got it knowingly wrong. They got it knowingly wrong. We had polls that were so ridiculous, and everybody knew it at the time. There was no blue wave that they predicted. They thought there was going to be a big blue wave. That was false. That was done for suppression reasons. But instead, there was a big red wave. President Trump claimed last night to be the legal winner of the election and called a press conference at the White House to complain at length about the postal voting system, which he claimed was rigged because the late returns were overwhelmingly for Mr. Biden. After nearly 17 minutes of complaints, Mr. Trump left without taking any questions. With the country on tenterhooks and the president's grip on power appearing to weaken, Mr. Trump tried to halt the counts in Pennsylvania and Nevada. A judge in Georgia threw out a similar attempt hours after it was filed. You know, I think what the president needs to do is, frankly, put his big boy pants on. He needs to acknowledge the fact that he lost and he needs to congratulate the winner. Meanwhile, Mr. Biden appealed for patience while the unprecedented numbers of postal votes from Tuesday's election were tallied. Each ballot must be counted, and that's what we're going to see going through now. We have no doubt that when the count is finished, Senator Harris and I will be declared the winners. So I ask everyone to stay calm, all the people to stay calm. The process is working. The count is being completed, and uh, we'll know very soon. Ethiopia's federal army is mobilizing troops from across the country as it continues its offensive in the northern Tigray region. The army's deputy chief of staff accused regional troops loyal to the Tigray People's Liberation Front of treason. Tigray's leader said the troops were engaged in clashes along the border with the neighboring Amhara state. The head of the UN has called for a de-escalation of fighting. The TPLF used to be the dominant force in Ethiopia's ruling coalition, but its power has waned since Abe Ahmed became prime minister in 2018. France has stepped up security at its borders and is calling for a rethink on free movement in the EU after a spate of suspected Islamist terror attacks. La peur. President Emmanuel Macron said the EU's Shenzhen area, which allows people to cross borders freely, may need reform. A knife attack in Nice last week, which killed three people, was blamed on a Tunisian migrant who crossed into France from Italy in October. It was the second alleged jihadist attack in France in just over a month. France's security alert is at its highest level, with thousands of soldiers deployed to protect places of worship and schools since teacher Samuel Paty was beheaded for showing cartoons depicting the Prophet Muhammad to his students. Kosovo President Hashim Thaki is being held in detention in The Hague hours after resigning from office to face a war crimes indictment. He and two other suspects were flown to the Dutch city on Thursday. Earlier this year, a special prosecutor accused Mr Thaki and others of being criminally responsible for 100 murders during Kosovo's independence war against Serbia in the period of 1998 to 1999. Mr Thaki denies any wrongdoing. At least 50 people have been killed by landslides in Guatemala after Storm Etta's torrential rain and high winds battered the Central American country. Etta made landfall in neighboring Nicaragua as a hurricane on Tuesday to be later downgraded to a tropical storm. Guatemalan President Alejandro Guillemate said around half the deaths were in a single town where a hillside collapse buried some 20 houses under thick mud, adding that a month's worth of rain had fallen in less than half a day.
And finally, a Rubik's Cube artist has created a 6,000-piece mosaic in under 16 hours, the largest Rubik's Cube mosaic ever made in this time. Giovanni Contardi created the special artwork to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the logic puzzle. It took the Italian 15 hours, 49 minutes and 32 seconds to complete the 6,111 piece artwork, beating his 24 hour target. The mosaic, made using the artist's own cubes, measures 5.5 meters by 3.66 meters and depicts the Greek god Atlas holding a giant Rubik's cube. He solved each cube in approximately 7 seconds. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos. Many thanks, Simon. After months of postponement owing to the COVID-19 outbreak, National Council of Sports has confirmed that the Edo 2020 National Sports Festival will hold from December the 3rd to the 18th in Benin City. The council at its meeting in Asaba, the Delta State Capital, says the competition will be held in two phases with the first phase from December the 6th to the 10th, while the second phase from December the 12th to the 16th. The Confederation of African Football CAF has released health and safety guidelines for the matches of the African Cup of Nations qualifiers. After about eight months of recess owing to the COVID-19 pandemic, the qualifiers resume on November the 13th, and the Super Eagles of Nigeria will face Sierra Leone at the Sam Ugwemudia Stadium in Benin City, Edo State. The African Football Governing Body announced that all games will be played behind closed doors. I'm Ayo Tunde, Balogun to Rapid Sports News. And the main news again. The Lagos Judicial Panel probing cases of police brutality today began playing back CCTV footage from the October 20 Lekki Ensars protest. This came as witnesses narrated tales of illegal detention and seizure by the disbanded special anti robbery squad in Abuja. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Minister Fumoka. Have a good night.